she told us she wasn't. Hmm. Come to think of it. I know um, Josh, a long time ago, Josh was going to run some meetings as well yeah. in her absence. Right. But I don't it's see fine. him here either. Let me text them both and see um, what's going on. Well, while I'm waiting to hear back from them, I do want to introduce uh, Emily uh, Boynton from Mosaic Medical. She's a senior development officer. Um, she'll be our speaker today, as well as, um, is that Jason as well? Hi, Jason, we haven't met. Um, for those of you who don't know, I recently started working with Mosaic Medical um, as their grants program manager. We've been with them now for about four weeks, it's a steep learning curve. But um, so these guys will be our guest speakers today and just waiting to hear from Rachel and Josh who normally run our meetings. Yeah, I've uh, joined volunteers in medicine. I've done some volunteer uh, pop-up clinics with Mosaic. They're a great, great organization. Oh, cool, I didn't know that. Yeah, that's, yeah, they are very um, amazing, really cool. Have a major, a huge reach throughout Central Oregon. Yeah. I was looking at some data and uh, we served over almost 24,000 people last year alone. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty wild. But, uh, but Emily and Jason will give you all the stats and talk about our capital project in Madras and give you all the fun stuff as well. Maybe, <laughs> maybe we should start with the program and wait and see what happens to our uh, officers. Sure, that's a great idea, Ann. Um, so yeah, we'll go ahead and turn it over to Emily and Jason, and I believe you guys had a presentation, correct? Yes, yeah, we do. I'll share my screen briefly. Thank you all for having us today. We have a, we have a few speakers with us today because we wanted to introduce you to a couple, uh, to um, one of our new employees. Uh, I am also one of those new employees, so let me pull that up really quickly. Can everyone see my screen? All right. Yes. Yeah. All right. Well, mm -hmm. let me pull this so that it looks a little bit better for you. All right. Better. Uh, so uh, as Penny was saying, uh, we're Mosaic Medical and we have the, um, thank you so much for giving us the opportunity today to talk a little bit about Mosaic, about what's coming down the pipeline and just an update on our services. You know, this last year it's, uh, healthcare has been able to adapt uh, to meet our patients where they are even more. Uh, and so we'll be able to um, go through that today. Uh, I actually have Jason and Greg, our new clinic manager uh, for Redmond uh, on the call here with me today. So we'll be tag teaming this particular presentation and giving you guys all an update. Feel free to jump in and ask us questions um, and uh, we'll get this started. So uh, for those of you who don't already know, Mosaic Medical is a nonprofit private co community health center system. Uh, we have 15 clinics all throughout Central Oregon um, from Madras, uh, Redmond, Primeville, and throughout Bend. Uh, and we'll be talking a, a little bit more in detail about our Redmond community in a bit. Uh, but really, the premise of Mosaic is that, you know, our care is never influenced by how much money or our patients make, what languages they speak, or the status of their insurance coverage. We really meet our patients where they are mentally, physically, and financially. Uh, so we've been seeing a lot of need for that uh, increase <laughs> throughout the years. Um, We've been around now for almost 20 years. This next year, we'll be celebrating our 20th anniversary. So you can look uh, forward to some of those celebrations next year. Uh, but Mosaic was started by families in Primeville um, almost 20 years ago who saw a need for affordable health care uh, in the region. Unfortunately, there was a family in Primeville uh, that had a small baby that um, 
if uh, they brought into the ER and if they had had affordable primary care uh, available to them, that baby would still be with us to this day. Uh, so the community came together and got uh, the county involved and um, built our first clinic in Pineville uh, back in 2002. As you can see on the slide, we've grown quite a bit uh, in the last 20 years to those 15 clinics across the region and just made sure that we were meeting our patients where they were uh, physically. Um, but we also have our mobile clinic, which you may have seen uh, running throughout Central Oregon along um, Highway 97, uh, um, so that we can really work with our unhoused patients as well, all, through, all throughout Central Oregon throughout the week. Um, and really, we work on making sure that we're listening to our patients and that we're truly uh, making an impact on the daily lives of everyone in Central Oregon. Uh, and we make sure that we're doing that. And uh, we always say our tagline is quality care for all. And we truly live that value. Uh, as you can see here, all of our main clinics receive five out of five stars. This uh, particular rating is what health centers across the nation use as a best practice rating. Uh, they want to make sure that people who come to these particular clinics feel like they have a medical uh, home. So that's uh, accessibility, accountability, they have comprehensive services, and our Redmond Clinic in particular uh, was able to receive that uh, during um, the pandemic this last year. So they've really been keeping up with those services and making sure that people can receive medical, nutritional, uh, behavioral and dental and um, other services that we provide. So I'll let Greg kind of get into a little bit more about um, what uh, our patient demographics is like. Go on. Um, yeah, so I will, uh, well, first I'll, I'll introduce myself. I am the new clinic manager in Redmond. So I've been with the organization for um, coming up on a, about a month and a half now. So, um, yeah, it's an interesting time to, to join Mosaic um, amongst this uh, new variant of COVID coming in, but, um, and it's an exciting time for uh, the organization as well with uh, utilizing the flexibility we have. So, uh, speaking a little bit on the aspect of demographics, um, you can see uh, across Central Oregon, uh, Mosaic has seen uh, over 27,000 patients, um, 18,000 of which are uh, adults 18 to 64, and uh, children uh, almost 6,000. So uh, quite a few folks there. And uh, if you look at how folks are, are paying for their, their health care, how they're actually accessing that, uh, we have 53% that are uh, Medicaid, 23% Medicare, and then 18% uh, private insurance. And then we have a, a smaller sliver of 6% uninsured, and we really work with those folks to explore every avenue that they have to um, pay for their health services, whether that's um, through OHP or uh, sliding scale uh, services that we can provide um, through the organization as well. So uh, speaking a little bit about the care we provide, uh, some folks you know, kind of think of it just in terms of medical, but we actually offer a number of different services as well. Nutrition, pharmacy, dental, uh, behavioral, and of course, medical, which we're known for. So uh, we just for the last 18 months have had uh, almost 300,000 uh, care steps, so direct interactions with uh, folks in those different areas. So, uh, and, and you can look at the bottom part of that slide there where there uh, is a little bit more detail on the number of unhoused patients we served and uh, total speakers of non-English language as well. And um, those visits where we actually provided an interpreter and other interventions uh, provided by the community health workers, which Jason is, a part of that team, and he'll speak about that in a moment. Uh, moving on to our footprint, uh, we are in the Tri-County area, 
We have main clinics in Pineville, Madras, Redmond, East Bend, and a, a complex care center um, in, in Bend as well. So as Emily mentioned, it was Mosaic as an organization started out in Prineville back in 2002. Um, from there, we went to Madras. I'm sorry. Uh, from there, we went to East Bend in 2005, Madras in 2006. And then we started in Redmond first at a, a um, school health, uh, school based health center at Lynch. And that was in 2012. And then the next year, we opened up our main clinic in 2013. And then since that time, we've also opened an additional school based health clinic at the high school in 2017. So uh, give you an idea there, we, we also have satellite clinics um, in Redmond, I'm sorry, in, in Ben, <coughs> Harriman, Ariels, uh, Courtney, and then we also have the mobile clinic that um, is located in Redmond, uh, Thursdays and Fridays, uh, one spot is the, the Church of God and the other is the east, of, east end of Antler um, near the Deschutes County uh, services offered there. And then, as I mentioned, those school-based health centers, uh, Crook Kids out in Prineville, Lynch in Redmond, uh, Mountain View in Bend, Madras High, Bend High, and Redmond High. And the next slide shows you a little bit more. I mentioned that a little bit already, that Mosaic really is more than just medical services. Um, this, you know, there's uh, 10 pieces of this pie that are shown, I'm sure we could actually throw in some, some different uh, categories there, but uh, obviously the medical. We, as I mentioned before, really help folks get enrolled with uh, Oregon Health Plan and other assistance for uh, paying for those medical services, language access, whether that's, <clears throat> excuse me, providing uh, interpretation, uh, um, translation of documentation, or actually attending uh, an appointment with patients, uh, other support services, patient education, uh, nutrition, pharmacy, community health, and behavioral health, and dental. Specifically with the Redmond Clinic, um, we have a total of 13 exam rooms for our medical providers. And additionally, we have uh, two for behavioral health. So we have uh, a behavioral health consultant there on site every day for warm handoffs. So if a patient sees a primary care provider and determines they'd really like some help um, quitting smoking, that provider can actually walk down and do a warm handoff with the behavioral health provider and say, you know, this patient is really interested in smoking cessation. What can we do for them? And and uh, that behavioral health consultant can do a, a just a, a quick meet and greet, or if they have time, actually sit down and do um, an assessment and intake and determine, okay, well, maybe this person is best suited for a, a group, one of those, uh, you know, patient and support groups for smoking cessation, or if it's for weight loss, maybe hook them up with a nutritionist in addition to uh, behavioral health uh, visits. So uh, a number of different things we can do there. And if you look at overall the, the general idea of Mosaic being a, a home for these patients, we really want to be as comprehe comprehensive as possible and coordinate that care. So that's why you see so many different services that are offered uh, with, within our uh, umbrella. So uh, another thing to mention that's a little bit more unique with our Redmond site is we actually have a dental suite on site in our clinic. So we have three chairs available and see quite a few patients there. We also have a lab within our clinic. So if a provider requests a point of care testing, whether it's something simple such as, you know, a strep test or a flu test, we can obviously do that. Or uh, if it's a, a lab draw, some, some blood work that needs to be done, we can actually draw that blood in clinic and send that off to St. Charles to be processed. So that's one less step for our patients. They're not actually having to get in their car and go over, wait in line at St. Charles and then have that blood drawn. We can actually do that within house. And it really, um, really cuts down on the barriers to those individuals receiving their care and getting those test results. 
Um, give you an idea also with the Redmond Clinic itself, um, talking about numbers uh, over the last 18 months or so, we've seen 41,000 um, uh, patients for medical visits. Uh, behavioral health, we, we saw almost 5,000 for that. And then and dental, we're actually ramping up because of um, some of the, the staffing issues with pandemic and the restrictions there, but we're ramping that up and we saw almost 2,300 as well. So uh, give you an idea about some other services that the Redmond Clinic provides. Uh, something new that uh, was developed during the pandemic is uh, drive up care. Uh, we previously weren't doing this, but saw that need. And so uh, right now we're, we're solely utilizing that for COVID testing and COVID vaccinations. But previously, and once things die down, we'll actually get back to this a little bit more, but uh, using those services for A1C testing, so blood sugar and things like that, blood pressure, um, and other, other point of care testing that um, may not require a, a, a visit with the, the provider. If our RN has, you know, a nurse has spoken to that patient uh, during triage and determined they need some sort of, uh, of test, we can just do that in the car right there. So that individual has it, doesn't have the need to actually come in the clinic and, um, you know, wait for those services. We're able to deliver that a little bit more on demand. So um, also wanted to mention, one of those uh, teams that we have in the Redmond Clinic that is, you know, across a couple of these different categories would be our uh, transitions team where we actually have a medical provider and a counselor providing uh, services to those folks that are um, addicted to opiates. And so uh, not only do we have counselors, behavioral health counselors, um, we actually have a, a psych nurse practitioner as well that can prescribe medication and we really try to be as all-encompassing as possible for a primary care home. And uh, the, the pandemic has, has slowed quite a bit of our services in terms of you know, face-to-face -face, uh, interactions, but we are uh, starting to get some of those services back. I mentioned the smoking cessation group. We're doing an online version of that, but uh, looking to the future about getting those folks back in our clinic to do some of those things. And also provide other nutrition services, uh, cooking uh, and information classes, things like that, that um, really benefit our community. Uh, also wanted to mention something that's a bit more unique about the Redmond Clinic in that we are a, the bottom floor of our, our building is Mosaic Medical and the top three floors are uh, housing. One of our community partners, Housing Works, um, so the building is actually called Cook Crossing, um, provides affordable housing for seniors that are 55 and older um, at the median income level or below. So that, that building actually houses 48 units, um, one, in bed, one and two bedroom units. And so that's something that is unique about um, our clinic, um, not only in Central Oregon, but across the state, I believe there's... Um, uh, I, I think maybe we were the third one in the state um, to have a setup like that to where um, our building actually provides uh, housing to uh, lower income individuals. And um, moving on to the, the next slide there, I wanted to mention um, how important it is with all of our different services we provide that we don't lose track of really what is needed, what um, our patients, you know, are requiring on a daily basis from their medical provider. So um, that patient feedback is really important to us to not only innovate, but also provide those services that are uh, unique to each individual community we serve. So uh, we have a patient advisory council that meets quarterly, and, and those are uh, specific to each site. Um, and Redmond, we just had ours uh, a few weeks ago. And then on top of that, we have a uh, board for the whole system that is a uh, patient majority. And so really keeping a pulse on what our community is seeing that we're doing well, 
and a room for improvement as well is really important to us. And it's, uh, provides us a level of, um, freedom of, of direct access to, you know, what we can do to really, uh, you know, meet our mission of, of serving our patients. So, uh, one other thing I, I wanted to mention, and, um, Jason can speak to this a little bit more next, but it, it's really key for our generous donors and, and grantees to be, uh, connected with us. And we see so much benefit in that. And so, when that's with that close connection, we're actually able to go above and beyond our services and help our our patients improve their daily lives through a variety of uh, different programs. And uh, so it's really important to, uh, as an organization, stay connected to our community and serve uh, it well. And Jason, would you like to take over from here? Yes, yes, I would. Um, hello, everybody. My name is uh, Jason Villanueva. I'll just uh, quickly introduce myself. I'm a uh, community health worker. Um, I'm based out of the, the Redmond office, um, and I've been with the organization uh, for 10 years, actually. I completed uh, year 10 in August, which I'm, I'm really excited about. Um, so before I kind of jump into this, um, I want to start out with a patient story. Uh, the gentleman that you saw in the previous slide on the, on the right there, um, he is one of our pediatric patients. Um, wanted, again, to kind of highlight this story because it just really paints a picture as, as how a community health worker um, and really um, multiple staff members in the clinic can really come around and wrap around a patient to, to really get them what they need. Uh, so this gentleman... Um, and uh, his family presented uh, to us, uh, they're Spanish speaking, and um, he needed foot surgery. Uh, this, this foot surgery um, that he needed was really causing him, um, causing him a lot of pain, I mean, consistently. Um, it was interfering with his ability to, to do his uh, sports at school that he was involved in, and really just his everyday life. And it was just um, incredibly, evident that like this was a need uh, that was needing to be met but then they ran into the uh, to the barrier that when they submitted for for the surgery through insurance uh, insurance denied it for many reasons and um we <laughs> we uh, as a team after months and months of just uh, appealing and just coming together to see um okay how can we approach this how can we prove to the medic to the insurance company that this is medically necessary and these are the reasons why. Um, so it was really neat to see over, over a number of months um, and again countless, countless interactions between the specialist, mosaic medical providers, community health workers, medical assistants, um, it was ultimately covered uh, which, which was amazing. Um, and I'll tell you why it was also super amazing to see um, this family uh, is primarily Spanish speaking uh, this uh, was a Spanish-speaking kiddo. Um, English is his second language, um, and uh, that adds another layer of of complexity to this whole thing. Is is the you know the the language barrier? But again, with our um, bilingual staff members and just um, everyone involved, we were able to to get this kiddo the the needed surgery. And just like like he quoted there, it, it changed his life. Literally changed his life. Um, and we, we see this family often still, um, just a huge um, accomplishment, I think, um, to this team-based model that, uh, that Greg was talking about previously. Um, so yeah, that was just a, a kind of a story I wanted to highlight. And just to kind of give a background as, as to my position as a community health worker and why it's so crucial um, in this picture is uh, community health, health workers um, are often providing support and informal counseling to our patients in, in a uh, variety of, of ways. So we're linking patients to key support services. We're providing referrals for needed services um, through our um, uh, community health partners, um, many of which you see there, um, as well as many uh, additional that aren't listed there. But uh, when, when our patients come in, they come in with a uh, variety of needs. So if, if uh, for example, if a pediatric uh, patient comes in, but we, we discover that this family is struggling to pay rent, struggling to pay their utilities, um, we assess all those things. We call it social determinants of health. So we look at their housing status, their employment status, the financial, their financial resources, their ability to afford food and keep food on the table. So uh, when we do all these assessments, um, 
we then leverage uh, existing uh, community partners uh, and resources to get them really uh, form that bridge to make sure the family gets what they need. Um, community health workers are also uh, providing outreach in um, needed areas. Uh, so Mosaic will identify how we can get involved and, and continue to support our under, underserved populations. And uh, you'll see community health workers often be the face of Mosaic at those events, uh, really interacting with our community face-to-face uh, -face, um, outside of our four, four walls. Um, and again, uh, Greg mentioned this a little bit as well, uh, community health workers also um, are assessing um, uh, needs of our patients that are underinsured or uninsured to make sure that they get connected to affordable, um, affordable health care outside of Mosaic's walls. For example, if a patient comes in and they're uninsured, but they need to see a specialist and they can't pay several hundred dollars uh, for, for a consult, um, we often, we'll, we'll identify clinics that will work with our patients um, and get them uh, the services they need to really ensure they get that quality care um, and you know, not really, really removing that financial barrier as much as possible. Um, and again, just, just to emphasize, uh, we couldn't do this work without the help of our community partners, uh, without the help of all of you, Kiwanis. Um, we are often reaching out to these folks to help our kiddos and our pediatric patients in need of clothing, food, school supplies. Um, I, it's just incredible to see how our community health, work, uh, community health workers and community partners um, collaborate uh, for the good of our patients. And that's where the real fascinating and, and just amazing work plays out when it comes to social services. It's just amazing that um, what we can do as far as like going the extra mile for our families. So we're really, really grateful for our partners there. Um, and then this slide here, uh, I just wanted to kind of focus on uh, our, our programs that are pediatric focused, uh, again, that go beyond our normal services to truly help our patients and, and these kiddos live their best life. Um, one of the first ones is, is called uh, the Reach Out and Read program. So the Reach Out and Read program um, is, is a national program uh, with an organ affiliate um, and it's been in place with, um, with Mosaic Medical since 2015. So through this program, uh, we've provided thousands of books to uh, Mosaic uh, pediatric patients. So at visits, uh, Mosaic providers will share a book with their small patients and, and model, discuss, and encourage uh, bonding with a child and explore, you know, parenting skills, uh, literacy, and, uh, you know, language development through this program. At the end of this program, uh, every Reach Out and Read kid or pediatric patient has a, um, has a library of books at home, which is kind of neat. Um, and then, you know, through this process, families gain a deeper understanding of why they should make reading a daily habit and, and they just leave inspired. So I think this is really neat. And it just, again, paints that picture of like ways that we're kind of thinking outside the box and ways we can assist and help our patients, our pediatric patients, again, live their, their best life. So that's our, our Reach Out and Read program, super awesome program. And it's uh, what's also really great is uh, books are often um, are offered in over 20 languages. So if, you know, family Spanish speaking, We've got them covered. Even if uh, we identify that you know a family or a, a parent is unable to read or the, or the patient's unable to read, we still encourage this program and and really <laughs> encourage them to let the pictures paint the paint the story if they can't read. Um, so it's it's really neat how far we can go this program. Uh, another program that I wanted to highlight is uh, the RX to Move program. Um, something I'm really passionate about when interacting with our patients is is getting them to move and be physically active. This particular program is geared towards pediatric patients uh, where our pr uh, a primary care physician or a PCP will recommend that the kiddo uh, should increase physical activity. Um, they'll present that via a prescription. So this is a really unique way to motivate not only the patient, but, but the family as well as a as a medical prescription to move, which I think is really awesome. Um, it allows for, um, for us to then remove financial barriers uh, to get them to the activity of choice. So for example, if, if, if a patient is interested in doing karate, but they can't afford the karate, 
this program will not only will not only write a prescription for it, but will re remove the financial barrier by paying the fees uh, required to get into those programs. So uh, we've been able to get kiddos into pro karate programs, swimming, local sports programs, rock climbing. I mean, anything that can get them to move and be physically active. This is the program of choice, um, and it's it's just really neat that we have that option. Um, uh, and again, it's. It's not limited um, to, to our young patients based on a set criteria. So it's not limited to folks with a specific weight or diagnoses. Um, it's, it's any child within the age, age ranges of the program uh, that could benefit from physical, physical activity. So that's the beauty of the program. Um, and again, a community health worker will, will partner up with that family, with that patient to make sure after the prescription is given, you know, are you enrolled in the program? Uh, and if not, we'll, we'll, we'll do anything we can. So they're plugged in, uh, fees are paid and, and it's just like stress-free, barrier-free. Um, and those are just two examples that we wanted to highlight for you to just kind of show you what we're doing on a day-to-day. -day. Um, and yeah. Thank you, Jason. Uh, so I know uh, we're running out of time here, but I wanted to briefly let you know that uh, we do have two projects coming up. So you will see more uh, mosaic buildings popping up here soon. In Bend, we're uh, doing a new, or we're building a new clinic that will open up early November uh, that will also have that affordable housing like in Redmond. Uh, and it will also have a pharmacy that's open to the entire uh, county. Uh, to, uh, to be able to use. So that is a great new uh, facility that we're really excited about coming up here in November. Uh, our next one is actually in Jefferson County up in Madras that Penny had mentioned at the beginning of this call. Uh, uh, in Madras, we've seen that uh, Jefferson County actually has one of the worst health outcomes of all the counties in Oregon. And so it's uh, upon us and Jefferson County Public Health Department to really move the dial and help out our patients. Once again, seeing people where they are. Uh, so we're going to be building that health center, uh, which is set to open in April. And we're currently uh, raising funds for that. Penny and myself are both working on that project uh, to uh, get this built by um, next April in partnership with the Jefferson County Public Health department. This will have not only our uh, doubling our exam rooms in Madras, um, but also tripling our dental suite that we have there and offering a pharmacy uh, open to the entire county as well um, there. So we have a lot of different programs that we'll be able to offer all people of Jefferson County, as well as a community room, uh, which is needed for those nutritional classes that Greg mentioned earlier and um, open to the public use as well. Uh, a great way for the community to come together and really build that health home up in Madras. <laughs> Um, so really, the ways in which to get involved vary over time where we, as Ann said earlier, thank you, Ann, for volunteering with us um, uh, during the vaccination clinics. Uh, we were able to have um, volunteers come into our clinics for the first time in a long time to we shut down one of our clinics in Bend just simply to provide vaccinations this um, this year. We did that for about three to four months. Uh, every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, all day long, people could come in for their vaccinations, and we could not have done that without our volunteers there um, on those days. We had about 12 volunteers per day, uh, and we received support from First Interstate Bank as well. Uh, uh, they gave donations as well as um, volunteer time, um, so we have to give a shout out to them for that because uh, they've been involved not only in our Reach Out and Read program uh, that Jason was talking about earlier, but also with this vaccination clinic. And there are ways in which to get involved that don't just involve time, but also uh, donating um, your support through our wish list. Uh, as Jason was saying, it, it's, you know, it really takes a community to make sure that we can offer these services. Uh, so we do take tangible goods as well. Uh, that wish list is on our Mosaic Medical website. Uh, we have a Brighter Smiles campaign, which helps fund our dental program, uh, specifically our pediatric dental program, uh, where people can donate, if they donate money to uh, Mosaic, then they get a whitening kit through their dental office. So these dental offices 
uh, around the Greater Bend area have been involved, um, and we're looking to get uh, more dental offices involved in specifically this dental <coughs> program. A lot of different ways to get involved, but specifically just being in the know, we do have an e-newsletter, we have a presence on social media, and we're always looking for feedback and um, to work with anyone uh, who wants to be a part of this mission. So we uh, can't thank you all enough for your time today. I really appreciate it. I'm glad that you were able to meet Greg and Jason, who are both in Redmond uh, today. And um, are there any questions or can we answer um, any comments or questions you may have? Yeah, this is Ann Graham. Um, I was a city councilor and a planning commissioner before that as the building in Redmond was coming together and the idea of it, and I was a strong component of the code and zoning changes that had to happen to put you guys together with Housing Works. So I'm just thrilled to see how much you've grown. And I think what you provide to Central Oregon is, is just amazing. Uh, and building new buildings, it's just, it's wonderful to see, and I, I appreciate what you do, so thank you. Thank you, Ann. We appreciate you, too, <laughs> for all of your help. Earl, did you raise your hand? Yes, I just wanted to comment also. Uh, I helped set up a, a, a federally funded health clinic in Klaskenai, and, and really think it's important on several different levels. Uh, being able to have uh, kind of a, a medical home, as it were, for folks to be able to go and get their uh, medical treatment and particularly those people who have behavioral health problems. You know, oftentimes the doctor was still an issue uh, and say you really need to go see somebody with behavioral health. And if they have to go to another location, uh, sometimes that just doesn't happen. And sometimes the follow-up just doesn't happen. And uh, that's too bad. And we, so I really appreciate what you're doing there. And I think setting up the school health-based clinics, absolutely essential. As an educator, I think that's exactly what needs to be done. I wish we would have more of them. So thank you for all that you do. Thank you, Earl. We appreciate your support. So I have a, I have a maybe procedural question. I know your primary care, but occasionally you must get a patient that needs to go to the emergency room. Um, how do you get them to the emergency room? And if it's a uh, ambulance, who pays for that? Does the patient have to pay for that? Yeah, right. I can answer that question. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, if, if a uh, patient needs to go to the emergency room and they're on the Oregon Health Plan, um, obviously it's, it's, it's on a case by case basis. Um, if it's, uh, they need to be there now, um, ambulance is called and there, there's no concern as far as who's paying because OHP will, will pick up the fees for that. Now, if it's an uninsured patient and they need to get to the hospital, we, um, if it's a non-urgent transportation situation, a Mosaic Medical actually does have a uh, transportation, uh, dedicated transportation fund uh, to assist with these types of rides. And again, these are rides that are, um, yes, they need to go to the ER, but they can also get there via Uber or a cab. So Mosaic will, will really try to eliminate any financial barriers possible. Uh, but again, if it's a Medicare, Medicaid patient, um, they're pretty much covered uh, based on, on, on insurance coverage. Hello? Okay. Yes. Hannah and Truman, I see, or Truman, I see your uh, Hannah, Hannah just got a phone call, so I'll use my question. Jason, I have a quick question for you, I, I imagine. Are you connected at all with the SMART program, the reading program that is, it sometimes, is in the schools? It sounds like you're doing something very similar. Yeah, um, I I actually am not. Um, I'm not very familiar with the SMART program, but I'd be I'd be happy to learn about it if if um, okay. yeah if it's out there, we we'd love to learn about it. They're not hard to find, and I'm what I'm thinking is they couldn't go into the schools all this last year or this fall. Uh, you know, schools can't handle more adults wandering in the door, so they may have some excessive. Uh, some excess in materials that they could pass along. I don't know. Yeah, no, that's yeah, interesting. They, we'll they ought to work with you. 
or you with them somehow. Yeah, yeah, we'll definitely look into that. Um, I think that could be a very interesting partnership. If they have um, some stuff they'd like to donate, we'll, we'll definitely hook, um, connect them with Emily and, and see how we can work together. Well, I used to read, I used to read for them. Uh, they, they give students young kindergarten and first and second grade, they give them books to take home just like you do. Yeah, so that's awesome. uh, that's awesome. that is the, <laughs> yeah, very good. Yeah, good. And with the Reach Out and Read program, there have been studies that have shown when a doctor gives a book to a patient, it uh, that patient actually does want to read it more. It's a, it's kind of a, and it makes for a fun uh, yeah. interaction that's not just about uh, their medical health, but rather what else they can do. Right. Um, John, I see your hand up. Yeah, hi. I was just curious if you could uh, tell me roughly how many people are employed by Mosaic Medical in Central Oregon? And then if you could also identify what, what you think is the most critical need in Central Oregon at this moment. Uh, we have 400 employees uh, generally across Central Oregon. We do have quite a number of um, openings at the moment. Uh, we're hiring across all of Central Oregon, uh, much like St. Charles, we have that um, uh, those openings, as Greg briefly mentioned, you know, through COVID, we've had some uh, staffing vacancies. Um, and really at this time, Mosaic Medical is focusing its time and attention on uh, making sure that we're getting out there and seeing our patients, especially those who, I mean, uh, not even our patients actually, going above and beyond and seeing people that need a vaccine, that need that care. So we have focused a lot of time getting our mobile clinic out to various uh, pop-up events. We've had pop-up vac vaccination clinics all throughout Central Oregon. Um, we've had opportunities for uh, people to come in and get A1C checks um, and to get hypertension, you know, their, um, their blood pressures uh, checked at our mobile clinic. And we bring that to those events all throughout Central Oregon. So it's about keeping our employees happy and healthy during this time period. That's a big, uh, uh, that's of big importance to Mosaic, but then also finding those people who really truly need our help and, and, and going to where they are to be able to provide those services. Uh, we do foresee in the future, you know, a great need for more behavioral um, health as, uh, it was mentioned earlier, you know, mental health is, is a large issue, especially during this last year where people were very isolated and not able to see uh, pay their doctors or even other people for that matter. So we are um, ramping those services up as well in partnership with um, all of the tri-counties. Um, so we look forward to being able to see more people in person if we can, otherwise having our drive up care, our virtual care and bringing our mobile clinic all around Central Oregon is really a priority at the moment. I could jump in there too. A couple of things that are, um, well, one of them put on the back burner a little bit, obviously with the new Delta variant, we're doing all that we can to uh, take the pressure off of uh, the hospital system. So we're working with St. Charles to uh, expand our uh, ability to give vaccines and, and do testing and whatnot and keep our patients out of, you know, the emergency room if possible. So if there's a, a same day appointment, we're trying to work that patient in, even if we're having to double book and things like that. So that's kind of an immediate need. Uh, but a more global uh, focus as well is with the pandemic over the last 18 months, so many people were deferring their health care. You know, they didn't want to come in clinic because they were concerned about um, getting sick, you know, contracting COVID. So reaching out to those folks and making sure we're doing the, the screenings that we need to, um, you know, whether cancer or general health with a, a, an annual, annual well visit and physical. So uh, re-engaging with those folks and making sure we don't lose contact with them and getting them, um, you know, connected with their, the, with their PCP to uh, make sure their overall health picture hasn't suffered because um, we haven't had the same accessibility. So we're really focusing on making sure we stay connected with those folks and get them in for those, um, you know, regular annual uh, wellness visits. Oh, hi. I was just wondering, 
what is your relationship with the county clinics, they shoot county and so forth. Are they like a partner with you at times or things they do that you don't do and vice versa? Yes, uh, the Shoes County is a, a good partner of ours. Uh, we have uh, a couple of clinics in Bend where we actually have uh, primary care providers embedded in their, uh, their county health departments. Mm. Um, and in Redmond specifically, in the next four to six months, we're looking to do something similar. So in their, um, their mental health program there on Antler, we will be uh, providing a, a primary care uh, doc um, to see patients similar, as I mentioned, the warm handoff in our clinics. Uh, if there's a patient there that's seeing a counselor and isn't set up with a, a primary care physician, they can walk down and do a quick uh, introduction to one of our physicians and we can get them set up with those services. So uh, Deschutes County is great to work with. And um, yeah, I, I'm working hard on getting all the, the operations set up to be able to do that within the next six months here in Redmond. Mm, great. Yeah, I can even share with my time with Deschutes County as the previous past tobacco prevention and education coordinator. I worked very closely with Mosaic um, on both policy systems and environmental change. Um, it was really cool. Like that was part of my interest in coming to Mosaic just because they're so community um, oriented and it just felt like a great fit for my role in public health. And um, it was just really impressive working with Dr. Bugsby and uh, even some of their other providers, um, or I should say our providers now, I've got to change my language now that I'm part of the team, not, not, not on the outside anymore, but um, just really cool. Yeah, they definitely, even this morning, like I'm in conversations with um, our access and integration partner at the county, and we're talking about a planning grant right now with, um, with OHA coming down the line um, and supporting uh, behavioral health, um, a behavioral health initiative to um, support affordable housing, um, safe and affordable housing for people with behavioral health uh, concerns, as well as um, substance use disorder is, um, issues as well. So that's just one example of how we're just, we're in lockstep with the county, and especially, I mean, just to go to show our capital campaign with, Mad with Madras, or excuse me, in Madras, um, again, that was an invitation, and Emily can speak more to this, but that was an invitation from Jefferson County to to be a partner um, in this project as they built out their new health department and asked us to be, you know, the provider, um, the healthcare provider. And so that's, again, just how we are connected. And, and of course, our Primeville Clinic uh, also is um, housed. Well, we actually own the building that our Primeville uh, Mosaic Clinic is in, um, and we lease it to uh, uh, Crick County um, Health Department. And so that's just how we all kind of work together. <laughs> yeah, well, we can't do it guys. without our partnerships. <laughs> thank you guys for a great presentation. Thank you all for your time today. And if you have any other questions or sure. uh, want to get involved in any way, feel free to reach out. Penny has our contact information or you can find us um, uh, at donate at um, mosaicmedical.org or info or uh, any of those emails I provided on our presentation. Uh, thank you Great. all for your support and time today. Thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you. I'm so impressed by the wealth of services and resources that you guys provide to our community. It's just outstanding. Thank you, Rachel. We appreciate thank you. it. Thank you. Yeah. All right, everybody, I really appreciate your flexibility with the program today and how we didn't follow the normal format. So thank you, thank you, thank you, I appreciate it. Um, let's go ahead and move on with our, what would have been our normal agenda. Thanks guys. Um, so somebody tell me, did we do the Pledge of Allegiance yet today? Not yet. No, okay, let's go ahead and do that and then we'll just run through our <coughs> otherwise scheduled program. All right. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right.
So I still have a motivational phrase from last week. So you'll have to tell me, was last week invocation or did Josh already use my, my motivational phrase? He used it. He used your motivational phrase. He did? Okay. All right. So then do, do I have a volunteer for this week since I don't have one? I will. All right, Ann, go for it. Two minutes. Right. <laughs> what? Truman is heading. Would like to. He's got it. He's coming. Well, I've got one. So Truman okay, let's next, do both. next next week. Do both. So this is a quote from a movie that really I thought was was important. Sometimes right. the things sometimes the things that may or may not be true are the things a person needs to believe in most. That people are basically good, that honor, courage, and virtue mean everything. That power, money, and money and power mean nothing. That good always triumphs over evil. And I want you to remember this, that love, true love, never dies. You remember that, boy. You remember that doesn't matter if it's true or not. You see, a person should believe in those things because those are the things worth believing in. That's Robert Duvall from Secondhand Lions. And I thought it was pretty great. I like, I have goosebumps. <laughs> yeah, good. Yeah, thank you, Ann. You're All welcome. Right. Truman, what do you have for us today? Very short. <laughs> Okay. Only, only though, uh, sorry, only those who will risk going too far can possibly find out how far one can go. Oh, well, that's nice. And who like it? Yes, I like it. Well, thank you both. Nice and short. Yeah. Okay. Well, I really enjoyed our guests today, Emily, Greg, and Jason. That was a really nice presentation they did, and very thankful of their time. So Penny, be sure and let them know. <laughs> um, so going into announcements, I've got birthdays for this week. Happy birthday, Hannah. It was a few days ago, but happy birthday. <laughs> and then on the 28th, I've got Patricia Thompson. It's going to be her birthday. So um, any other announcements? And I apologize, I'm not able to see everybody. So um, Anne, I see your hand. You're muted, Ann. You're still muted. You're still muted, Ann. Okay, how about now? There you go. Okay, sorry. So uh, John, Carl Vertries has put out the newsletter and a, an email that lists a wrong left website for the silent auction. So I previously issued the correct website. If you try to go there, uh, please know that the, the one that just got put out is broken, the link. Uh, but the website is up and active. And if you have anything for it, please bring it to me, let me know. Uh, we're starting to get quite a lot of items. I think it's going to be uh, a very good year for the silent auction. But the most important thing now is to advertise it, to get it spread out there. So I will shortly put out an email to everybody. Hopefully you will share it, put it out to the people you know, and encourage your friends to go look at our silent auction site. Thank you. Thanks, Ann. All right, John Duff, I see your hand. My fake hand, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm actually uh, coming in for Michelle. Uh, she's got an update on where we are with volunteers for Oktoberfest. And we could certainly still use some help with several areas, um, particularly with the gates and still some, we've got a fair amount of people to, to, to pour beer, but we could really use some help with some gate gatekeepers. Um, so please, do look at your schedules, and if you have time, um, you know we could actually. They're two-hour shifts, but we it would be great if we could 
have you do a two hour shift, take, take two hours off and come back and do another two hour shift if that's, if that's possible for somebody. Um, so just, just, that's all I'm reporting for her. We, um, if anybody has, uh, has some time, they can email her or email me and I'll get the, get the time. And again, the, the day, the, the day starts at 12 ends at 10, but there, it looks like we have plenty of people there for setup, which is great. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six people, seven people there or more to help with cleanup on Sunday, which is great. So now we're just needing, looks like to me, day of day of event people. So yes, that's Nicole. Yeah, um, can you post a list? I'm happy to help. I just haven't seen a, a sign up sheet or anything. So okay, um, I will. I don't know how to do this. <laughs> um, I will try to get Michelle to send it to you, or maybe I'll forward it to you. What forward what she got or what she sent me? So that'd be great. Yeah, okay. yeah. I I also haven't seen the list yeah. either for sign up. It's um, got to be. It's got to have been updated. Michelle must have an updated one. That should it, be routed. I think I think some people. She told me that she's emailed everybody directly in one on one. No. Um, so something must be blocking something and and or I, I'm wondering if it's an issue with this shared Google spreadsheet thing too but I'll see if I can get it out there um, John is there a chance it's coming from Rimrock Trails and not her personal email it's, it's her personal okay okay I just I for the Google share um, just make sure that that on there it's not blocked and everyone has permission who has the link to, from what I can see uh, this email grants access to uh, to the item even without logging in. So um, it looks like anybody can fill in. So, okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thanks, John. I got to go. Okay. Bye, Ann. Bye. Um, okay. Um, I don't see any other hands for announcements. Last call. There's an e-bar e -bar meeting for Oktoberfest tonight at five. Okay. All right. And then let's do happy dollars real quick. And then I've got your joke for today. So I probably shouldn't have told you I have a joke because you'll sign off before I get to sell it. But <laughs> all right. Okay. So let's start off with who's happy today. Oh, oh go for it. Uh, I'm happy to see Linda Walker here. Not many of us in, in attend will lay in bed. So we appreciate you being here, Linda. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> All right, John, I see your hand. I have a um, couple dollars, but right now I've got a sad dollar. John Bruce, those onions that you gave me to grow, I was going out to pick them and they're completely gone. So the green parts, the stems are gone and I dig through the dirt and there's no bulbs. So somebody stole my onions in the garden. So I'm, I'm really oh disappointed God. about that uh, or something like deer. So disappointed about that. So that's two sad dollars. An onion thief. Yep. I should probably point out that mine are doing great. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Nicole, do you have one? You're on mute. I do. I'll, I'll okay. put in a couple of happy dollars just because I'm happy the weather is cooled down and beautiful. It is. Yeah. All right. Anybody else? I'll go, for a, I'll go for a couple of happy dollars. Okay. I had a fantastic week sailing in Antigua last week with uh, family sailing and diving nice you look very tan yes <laughs> i got it we got it okay we, we had the whole month practically with family we haven't seen for two years oh nice yeah a wedding my niece's wedding and all my family there and truman you, you can go say what we did oh and yeah. then then we uh flew east and uh, visited first the, the grandchildren and, and their parents, incidentally. 
Uh, <laughs> and uh, my sister brother-in-law, the, the point of that is my brother-in-law has been really ill, really sick. Uh, he had a, um, a, brain a brain tumor, a brain tumor removed. And a stroke. And, and a stroke and various problems. He uh, couldn't walk or talk a year ago and now he's up walking every day. Yeah. He's got his real expression on his face. He's back to himself. Yeah. He has a sense of humor part. back again. Yeah. And so it's it's great fresh. to see him now and to uh, congratulate yeah. my, my sister on pulling him through. And they moved to Vermont to um, an 1890 house. And That's then right. their daughter is fixing up an 1850 house next door. Wow. Yeah. Well, she has oh. a project, yeah. believe me. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, that was really exciting. Yeah. And John Duff. I got one more, I, and this is, I forgot this. Um, we lost a good one this week, guys, uh, Dick Keen. And um, I'm going to miss Dr. Keen. He, he was fantastic, Kwanis member, better better person. So um, I'm uh, just bummed, bummed we lost him, but uh, I hope he's in a better place. Uh, he always got my jokes. I, whenever I thought I had a good one, he was on it. I'll put in a happy dollar. This past Friday, uh, Alan Unger lent me his truck and trailer for me to uh, clear out my uh, storage bin. Uh, there was so much junk in there, I just threw away about 90% of it. And that saves me about 80 bucks a month. And I really appreciate that from him. Nice. Good example of the golden rule right there. I'll throw in a couple happy dollars, one for our speaker today and just all the work um, Mosaic does in the community. It's just, I'm really inspired to be part of the team. And two, um, just, I got out for a bike ride um, this week without the smoke. So I was really excited to got out for a bike ride on Monday and smoke free and it felt really, really good. So just appreciate the fresh air when we get it. Okay, anybody else? I'm scrolling through, I don't see any hands. Okay, all right. So we'll wrap it up with my joke today. What do you call malware that's on a Kindle? What do you call malware that's on a Kindle? Prehistoric. Any other guesses? I'm seeing those. Okay, it's a bookworm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, John, what else did you have for us? Just, uh, Carl's not here, but I'm sure he would remind everybody that dues are due. So oh, yeah, thank if you. If you haven't received a statement, please uh, contact Carl and he'll get you one. Thank you. Okay, um, any final words before we sign off for today? All right, everybody. Have a great rest of your Wednesday. It was good to see you. Thank you.